Guys, I wanted to go over something with you, and something that I learned. I learned a whole lot on this transmission on this truck. Never have been around these Eaton Ultra Shifts very much. I had a neighbor that they had one in a Volvo years ago. It was an older, I think it was, might have been a Generation 2, because it was like an 08. This is a Gen 3. Um, so, this is the one we had all the trouble with getting it started, and we found out it was airlocked. Uh, finally got it running. Um, I wanted to go over what I found on this transmission so maybe somebody would not make the same mistakes that I made because of that of just pure ignorance just not knowing um, I know now and I know what to do so one of the things is if you ever remove one of these transmissions what the first thing you want to do is they there's two different deals. You can go into the software. I have a Texa unit. The Texa unit, you can put it in either the service position, which that's not what you want to do, I found out. You want to put it in the open clutch position. And what that means, that's the same thing as if you had a regular transmission, a regular manual transmission. That's the same thing as somebody pushing the clutch pedal down and holding it, and that's releasing the clutch. That's what it means when they say open clutch. Okay? So... What you can do there is what you should be doing before you pull that transmission out of there or pull the engine out and leave the transmission on the jack, go to open clutch and turn the key off, pull the battery cables off, I think. But the way it works is the next time you cycle the key and give it ignition power, the actuator moves and puts it back in the normal position. So once the open clutch is activated with the software, it basically pushes the, it releases the clutch. Okay, and then what you want to do, let's get under here and I'll show you. I don't even know if you'll be able to see it, but, um, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what to do and then tell you what I did and how I fixed it. That's, that's what we'll do. I didn't show much of the process because I was, to be honest with you, I was with the help of a guy named Ken on, a YouTube viewer that's very knowledgeable about these he helped me out a bunch uh, so uh, after you okay you can't see it but there's a wear indicator with a tab on it okay and you'll see right here here's your actuator see this roller right here where my face that roller that actuator turns that roller and that roller there's one on each side of the throwout bearing and it pushes that that throwout bearing just like a regular clutch up against the clutch brake, which is right there. Okay, so uh, so what you would want to do if you're pulling this clutch out, you would go to the open clutch position with the software, right? And that'll shove that throwout bearing all the way back and take the tension off the pressure plate, which would allow the clutch disc to to move freely on the input shaft and then what you would do there's some holes well you can kind of see one right there then you would take some 7 16 by inch and three quarter inch long bolts uh, coarse threaded bolts and then thread in there and those are the shipping bolts and you'd rotate that crankshaft around and put all four shipping bolts in and tighten them up and that'll keep the that'll keep the clutch caged uh, when you disassemble it so what happened to me is I pulled, I pulled the transmission out and didn't cage that. And so what happened is the clutch got all out of whack and out of adjustment. Uh, hang on, I'm trying to get off from underneath this thing. And so anyway, what was going on with this thing was a factor of a couple things. That was one of the problems. And then the other problem was every time, so what was going on, every time I put it in drive, I could get it in the drive after I calibrated. After I calibrated it, I could get rid of the 27 code. The 27 code is basically telling you the clutch is not disengaging. And I found that if I could calibrate it, I could get the code to go inactive, I could clear it, and then I could go into drive, and I could drive it around the shop. No problem. But as soon as I stopped and I went from neutral back to reverse to back up, it would throw the code again, it would lock me out, and it wouldn't go into gear. So, that being said, I found out that how to do it, what they call a, 
clutch reset procedure because there's a lot of things in the troubleshooting uh troubleshooting for code 27 that we looked at you're supposed to look at your clutch brake angle and it's supposed to be if 16 degrees or less then you go to the next step whatever you know if it's 16 degrees or more you go to another step 16 degrees or more they tell you to uh i think uh calibrate it or something anyway that's besides the point everything and on the parameters on the pids were fine there was nothing wrong with that okay i'm just going to tell you how to do that open clutch you reset that tab when once you go to that open clutch setting and that clutch is released rotate that get your turn until down there on the flywheel and rotate that till that reset is there you'll have to tap on it a little bit with a screwdriver and then you can slide that over to the new position and then i was by myself usually you would have two people here and one guy could hold that in the new position and the other guy turns the key on then it moves the actuator back in the normal position and then it locks that piece in time in 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 its place well with without if you don't have two people you got to wedge that with a screwdriver so it stays in the new position either that or it's spring loaded it just goes right back where it was so anyways i wedged that in the new position and then i turned the key on and that locked it in place and the first time that i first time that i reset the clutch i got in there because i then i thought well i need to calibrate it now so i calibrated that clutch and uh it was worse than what it was i mean it wouldn't go into any gear it wouldn't do nothing so the, anyway i uh i thought you know what you dirty bastard so I, I i put it in the open clutch position again i reset the clutch again manually down there on the bottom i reset it again and i got in this time and i thought you know what the book says you don't have to calibrate it that it'll manually calibrate itself by driving it and it'll just be a little jerky till it gets adjusted right so i got in there fired it up and put it in gear and then it adjusted just fine and now it's so what i what i'm telling you guys is my i think my software was screwing me <laughs> and because every time i use the software to adjust it the clutch wouldn't release but if i let the the truck do it and then then it'd be fine so another thing that i learned too you can go into pd mode so put your foot on the brake go like that cycle the key on and off it, starting with on and ending with on you'll see an 88 but what will happen is if you have see we got a code in there a 63 code i'll look up the 63 code but that's how you can get the code out you got to have your foot on the brake though so um we got a code in there i'm not sure what that's about but let's see if it'll start and move <laughs> We might have a problem. Usually when the Ford Neutral is going back and forth, there's a problem. I don't know. We'll see. Let it build some air here. noise you hear there is that air compressor as soon as that compressor cuts out it'll quit making that noise and i checked the bearing on that compressor when i had it out it's fine wait for this compressor to cut out we'll see what it does
There he goes. See you quit making that noise. Okay, let's see if it screws up on me and makes a liar out of me. Now, before, if I went too fast, now it's going right in. So, anyways, Hopefully that helps you guys not make the same mistake that I made. So first thing is to avoid all these problems, before you pull one of these Eaton Ultra Shift transmissions out or you pull the engine out, cage that clutch. Remember, put the clutch in the open position, put 7 16 by inch and three quarter bolts. You'll have to rotate it around, there's four of them. Put them in there and that'll cage the clutch and then you can pull your transmission out. And when you put it back in, you put your clutch back in it, bolt it to the flywheel, put your transmission back in, rotate it around, pull all your, you can go to the open clutch position again and take all the tension because if you don't take, if you don't go to the open clutch position, you're gonna have a lot of tension on them bolts. So put it back in the open clutch position, pull all the bolts out, put it, Turn the cycle the key back on. That'll put the clutch back in its normal position. I guess you could calibrate it, I guess, if you wanted to. But uh, anyway, so uh, any and another thing is if you guys want to get your codes out, you can go into that PD mode just like we did there. So hold, hold your foot on the brake. You don't have to have the yellow knob in or nothing. Just hold your foot on the brake lightly. And then, okay, so key's on. You're gonna start with key on, and then off, on, off, on. And you'll see an 88. Don't pay any attention to that. Now I got a 25 code in there. You know what that means? Nothing's wrong with it. See, we're in PD mode. If you get the 25 code, that means nothing's wrong. So, I did see that 63 code once, and uh, I'm gonna look that up and see what that's all about, but I'm waiting on, uh, this transmission on this thing was full of water, <laughs> and the owner said just put gear oil in it, put it back together, but the tube, that water, of course, obviously is gonna sit in the lowest spot of the transmission of anything, actually, and the tube, there was a couple of rollers that were missing out of the bearings and the input gear on the PTO, well, I ordered them, and they came from Stockton Clutch Brake Exchange, and they're sending them up. They're supposed to be here today. And so we're going to put the PTO back together. I got an 8-bolt plate. I got an 8-bolt uh, PTO plate on the bottom, and I got it full of oil. So if you're wondering, I'm, I'm sure, what are you doing? You're running that son of a bitch around with no oil in it? No, it, there's oil in it. So anyway. Okay, well, I learned a whole lot. Well, I learned a little bit on this, on this fuel system. And the next one that I do do, I'm going to do what that one guy said. I'm going to cap this return off completely right here somehow. Oh, I'll just go back here by the tank or something. I don't know. Or put a plug, take the fitting out and put a plug in the hole here. And that's what he said. He said start it. And it'll force the air out of the injectors. And, and, then, and then put the hose back on once it runs. And then uh, bleed it normally and prime it up. So that's, that's a big lesson I learned right there on these things. Because I've overhauled quite a few of these, and I've never had one that started hard like that. Never. <laughs> this one was something else, man. All right, guys. Well, hopefully you guys that are working on these things, uh, hopefully I can help you not make the same mistake and have all the fight and grief that I've been having. So, all right. Take care.